So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today with regards to the topic that Microsoft is intensely focused on right now when it comes to how do we transform the customer connections that you have and not just doing that, but how do you inspire action and a connection with your customers? And when we look at this, we want to think about things like, well, how do we control or try to get our heads around the demand to deliver on customer expectations because it's constant and wants and needs are changing all the time? but also start to look at how you measure the impact of that because there are new measures, potential performance indicators that are coming into play, whereby lifetime value is still incredibly key and some other key measures that come into play around attribution and personalization are, are really, really important. But also how are you measuring the return not only on the marketing investment that you make, but perhaps things like the return on loyalty. So. What I wanted to cover during this session was to really look at how Microsoft is helping create moments of truth, a deeper understanding of customers, but also how we can help you surprise and delight your customers through a deeper engagement and crafting of journeys. So with that, I wanted to talk about the rewards for customer centric experiences. And what it comes down to is the potential impact that has been delivered through those that have embraced this, but those that are actually doing this more effectively than their peers. And it's clear to see that there is a huge amount of potential, but there's also investment that goes into really understanding how to make this work effectively. And one of the things that I often think about is that knowing your customer doesn't just mean that you collect lots of data. It's more difficult, of course, than ever and particularly over the last couple of years, but it's how you leverage that data to dig deeper emotionally, how you anticipate what's going to happen next, deliver every step of the journey, but also do that in a trustworthy way. Because if you get it wrong, there's such a huge potential impact in a negative way as a result of that too. And one thing that isn't going to stop is the rate of evolution. So for marketeers, but also for customer experience leaders, the evolution and digitization of experiences, whether it be machine learning, AI, VR, bots, we cannot ignore the humanity of the experience that needs to be created too. So whether that be through digital channels or whether it be through more traditional ones, there's this key blend that has to be struck in order to be able to create these experiences. And the final point I'll make here is that if you look at the average organization is building its customer data universe by 25% year on year. And if they have an average of around 40 front end systems or touch points, that starts to give you a feel for why it's so important to build out these customer profiles and, and understand the experience that, that you're offering to those customers. So what we often talk about, of course, is insight. Insight is going to be so powerful for everything that you do but also start to give you a sense of not only why is insight so key, but how do you learn from that too? So when we talk about this, we look at these aspects of things like hindsight, which of course is the traditional way of looking at data and saying, well, what do we learn? Can we reflect and you know, what went well, what didn't go so well? But then you start to look at this aspect of insight and insight starts to say, well, actually, based on what we did, this is where the learnings are, and this is where we think uh, we could have done better, or perhaps where we were surprised by our, our original hypothesis. But where we really want to get to is this sense around foresight. And when we talk about foresight, it's being able to look at what you've learned in order to be able to understand how you might be able to bring to bear the next experience, sort of try new things, or apply test and learn principles. And the final point I'll make here is that the very core of this talks about data. And you can see within the quote, um, sometimes you'd be like, well, how do you take the leap of faith to talk about bricks and, and clay? But you cannot do this without having a data foundation. You start to take a look at the importance of your ability not only to generate insights, but to collaborate. This is where you get the stepping stones and where you can start to apply the mechanisms that you want to craft the experiences and the marketing campaigns that you want to deliver. And this is where we start to get into this piece around closing the gap and what this really means. So closing the gap is about activating data to generate insight. 
think one thing that is really important though is that generating insight is one thing but activation is the key piece that's actually how you drive the outcome and the impact based on the learnings that you have the other piece here is that when you generate that insight it can be from a number of different sources and in many cases you say n number of sources so whether that be behavioral data transactional data demographic data, but also proprietary signals or third party signals that you're using. This is where you start to think about the fuller view of the experiences that you try to deliver to your customers, but that is delivered off the back of a deeper understanding of the data that you have. Now, this is where Microsoft would talk about its vision, and our vision is very, very clear in the sense that it is about trying to help organizations make sense of their data through unification, but also an understanding of it to try and derive insights that power your next generation experiences and that deeper understanding, as I said before, of the customers that you have. And when you combine that with our strategy oriented around digital transformation and the digital feedback loop, which you see here, when we look at this, this is really around how we start to break down the organizational silos that exist today and of course, whether that be within marketing or the broader business that you have, you know, operations data is critical to your understanding of what you can go to market with. But equally as important, of course, is the products or the services that you offer. Now, quite often the silos exist within organizations that mean that you don't necessarily have the full understanding that might benefit the way in which you craft the journeys and also the outcomes that you want to drive. And some other things that we would talk about here is that these are signals. So signals that come from potentially any part of your organization that can be taken, they can be harmonized around what we refer to as a common data model. And that harmonization of data means that you can reason over it more effectively. And then this is the basis of how you build intelligence and drive action. So some examples here would be you could generate a greater lifetime value with complete data because you actually have a better understanding of, for, for example, the average product holding that a customer has, but also where they're likely to use those services. Or what if we were starting to look at this on the basis of real time visibility into what customers are doing and where they're operating within your environment, within your domain, or using apps, for example, that are saying customers are going here and therefore our digital experiences need to be adjusted. And that's through the telemetry and the data that we generate, not just about people that are unknown, but most importantly, from a Microsoft perspective with our approach to customer data platforms is known profiles that you generate. And the next piece here was you say that it isn't just about how you deliver experiences, it's about empowering your people and empowering you as users. So, if you're using this, how can you make smart moves based on the learning that the system is trying to give you? So there's trust that you're placing in the environment and in AI to help you, but that is all part of the practice of trying to look at the harmony that you have as a user with the technology and machine learning as well. So on the basis of what we're doing right now, we would start to take a view on the end-to-end -end experiences that you would look to deliver. So you're looking to drive a view that allows you to grow and thrive and look at this on the basis of not just what you think your journeys are, but taking an appreciation for the fact that every journey could be different. And journeys, of course, are not linear. And we would be foolish to think that they, that is the case. Um, some may be, but um, we want to help customers understand how their customers are behaving and carefully build and curate journeys based on, as I said before, a deeper understanding of the data that you have. So with that in mind, this is where I wanted to talk to you about our approach and the Microsoft approach to how we're doing this. So Microsoft has a CDP or customer data platform capability through Dynamics 365 Customer Insights. And this is how we're starting to take advantage of breaking down these organizational or data silos and unifying that data. So we look at this from the point of view that this could be any data. So if you're looking at any data, how could you bring that together to have it orient around unique customer profiles? And if you have unique customer profiles, that could give you a better understanding of who you know, but also the audiences that you're trying to attract. 
So here we look at this on the basis, as I said, of any data that you bring in. How do you combine internal and external customer data to create new connections? How could you look at this to unify that and then discover real time insights? So what insights could you generate? This could be something like a, a churn model or a recommendation model. If you have a subscription model, who is higher propensity than others? So you start to build out control groups and cohorts to target them based on what you know. You can also use this to do some really important things related to how you visualize the data. So using capabilities from Power BI to really start to look at how you visualize and wrangle data as well. And then we also have our capabilities within the AI and machine learning space. I've mentioned a few examples of what we can do there. So bringing templates in or the ability to bring your own machine learning models and libraries to say, apply this over our customer data so that we can create these more personalized, relevant, and interest-based stories for our customers. The final piece on here is talking about what Microsoft can do to light this up. So lighting it up through apps, our own apps, the Dynamics 365, Power Apps, uh, but also Power BI, but also then the ability to be able to do this through any channel. So activating through connectors to things that you use day in, day out, whether that be something like a DSP or some of the social channels in order to be able to say, pass this segment with this group or this cohort with these parameters and more from these demographics in order to build that out. So when we have done this, we have done this on the basis that we are looking at known customer profiles, but what we're also introducing is this concept of enrichment. And when we talk about enrichment, this is bringing the Microsoft graph to bear, which gives you a flavor of what is happening within our search and audience network. So all of a sudden you're moving from this ability to be able to understand the data that you have and then Microsoft enriching that with insights. So we'd be looking at brand affinities, interest areas, but also lighting up demographic insights to say that this person is a part of this segment or audience and therefore help you not only, as I said before, look at this piece where you say we know these customers, uh, but you're looking at this from the concept of we can target people that look like that. Um, and then we can start to think about building these audiences out, the connections that are there and those that could potentially be in the market. Furthermore, I, would, I talked before around this idea of telemetry and data that comes from our ability to take insight from how people are interacting on digital services. So within your domain, how people are behaving on your sites or also what people are doing within apps and telling you where people are going or where you can start to think about how you could change your journey to say nudge people here or people are behaving like this and then look at how you can use attribution modeling to say oh, when people come here this is what happens and again we're looking to unify that data and help you achieve that so just to close out on this session i wanted to highlight a few customer examples and stories of organizations that are really embracing the cdp approach and Tivoli Gardens is a great example of that, one of the world's oldest theme parks, and they've been delivering experiences since 1843. Now, what they wanted to do is try and drive a better understanding of the data that they have than ever before. And they have a really broad demographic. So you look at this on the basis of people that are very young, but also to the older generations as well. They're looking at how they can understand the experiences of people in the park, as well as how they engage them outside of the park, so offsite as well. Now, what they wanted to look at the experience here is how they could craft out personal interactions based on how people interact in the park, but also interact digitally with them as well. Not only have they done that, they did that in a really, really quick way, so that it was about rapid iterations on trying to build out this platform in months and um, not years in order to do this. But they've also built out a loyalty program, which they are using not only to try and engage and acquire new customers, but look at how they can use the principles of membership and then therefore churn modeling to retain those people year over year. The second story is Campari, um, who I'm sure you might be familiar with um, in terms of their presence worldwide. And Campari actually had a situation where they were trying to make sense of data that they had that resided in silos, their MarTech estate was complex, not just in terms of what they did as a corporate function, but globally with different organizations or so different countries being able to do different things. What they did is they embarked on a 
global CRM program, which was designed to try and bring this data together. So not only engage customers effectively, but essentially broker the conversations with the bartenders, for example, that are connected to them. All about building out affinity, a deeper understanding. And as I said before, as part of the, this journey is really crafting out how you use signals to build out a journey for customers or your customers' customers as well. And then the final story was around what the industry would call QSR. So this is quick service in, in terms of retail. And Chipotle um, had a situation whereby they actually had a significant customer base. They had a loyalty base as well. Um, but the problem that they had is that they had what they believed was lots of duplicate data. So this came down to um, how could they use a CDP to try and identify the unique customer profile, but also build a profile around what they might call a headless profile as well. So that person could be anonymous or that person could be on a journey, but could exist many, many times as well. So what they did is they wanted to look at better understanding that unknown to known journey, but also look at this on the basis of using our enrichment capabilities too. So you start to move into this idea that you can not only have your own view of the world, but you enrich it with our signals to say people that are working or using um, your products or services are also getting a deeper understanding of where their affinity or connections may lie. The final piece was around what they were doing with activation. So specifically uh, for Chipotle, they were looking to harness their DSP, uh, but also Facebook directly to try and build out these connections. And that's where they really got into this piece around trying to hyper segment, uh, but also hyper personalize based on the understanding of their customer base. So finally, um, I realize um, I have covered a lot of ground here, but if you're interested in understanding more, please do not hesitate to connect with your Microsoft account executive or Microsoft team, but also if you work with a Microsoft partner, they will be more than happy to help you here. We also have our own digital platform that you can go to so you can find out more about what Microsoft is doing in the CDP space and we shared a link here, but also we have our events that we run every month to try and help customers understand what we're doing in the CDP space and that you can get your hands onto the tools too. So thank you very much for your time. Take care.